And we've got breaking news coming in. The Prime Minister will be making an important announcement according to the Prime Minister's office in just about 30 minutes from now. The Prime Minister will be briefing the country very, very shortly. Sources telling us that the Citizenship Amendment Act is also to be notified by the government today, though we cannot confirm yet that the Prime Minister and his announcement will be regarding CAA. We don't know that just yet. All we know is that the Prime Minister's office has notified all channels, all media agencies that the Prime Minister will be making an important statement in just about 30 minutes from now. So by around 5.20, we're expecting clarity on what the Prime Minister is going to be speaking about. Uh, we can only conjecture at this time. Uh, we are being told that it has nothing to do with CAA. It has nothing to do with CAA. Those rules will be notified separately. It won't be coming via the Prime Minister. So what is the Prime Minister going to be making a statement about? We're standing by for our political team to give us some uh, sense as we continue to speculate on what this may actually be. Gaurav Savant is with me from, uh, uh, from the India Today offices for more on this story. Gaurav, uh, big suspense now, 30 minutes to go for the Prime Minister to make an important statement. Usually, there isn't a notification you know, from the Prime Minister's office about uh, you know, any kind of statement. Uh, you know, events happen, the Prime Minister is making a lot of statements, but this one seems to be important. Any, anything you're hearing about what this could be, our sources are telling us that the CAA notification is separate. That has nothing to do with what the Prime Minister is going to be talking about now. Shiv, that's exactly uh, what we are being told as of now, that this announcement is unlikely or not likely to be uh, on the CAA at all. That will happen in due course uh, for the Prime Minister to come and make a statement uh, would be something really big. There is intense speculation, but we do not know uh, uh, n nothing from the Prime Minister's office or from the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. Uh, uh, sources are also very tight-lipped because you'd recall, Shiv, uh, last time when the Prime Minister made an announcement uh, like this, uh, it was on demonetization and uh, that had caught the entire country by surprise. Uh, what will it be this time? Um, uh, we still do not know. Uh, but uh, initially it was being speculated that uh, CEA could be notified today. Uh, government sources are telling India today that that notification will happen in due course. That does not require the Prime Minister to make a special statement. That special statement that will happen in about 25 minutes from now. We will have to wait and watch uh, what the Prime Minister will talk about, Shiv. Okay, this is... Uh... Uh, you know, we're entering the realm of speculation. We can confirm to our viewers that the Prime Minister's statement, whatever it is in the next 25 minutes, is not going to be about CAA. No link whatsoever. That's a separate development that we've been tracking and those rules are going to be notified separately later this evening, most likely, say our sources. Uh, but remember, this is election season. The Prime Minister uh, has been on a very, very high tempo series of visits all across the country. There are several different issues on which, uh, you know, he has expended his political capital this election season. But the most tantalizing aspect right now is there is total suspense and speculation over what the Prime Minister uh, is likely to speak about. What is so important that he needs to brief the nation or make a national statement about it? It can't be any routine issue. Uh, remember, whenever the Prime Minister... Uh, whenever there has been a notification that the Prime Minister uh, is going to make a statement or, uh, uh, you know, is going to brief the nation, uh, uh, you know, there, there tends to be a, a wave of nervousness because in the past there have been things like demonetization, the COVID lockdowns, etc. But uh, uh, these obviously cannot be anything on the scale of that unless the Prime Minister has something else up his sleeve. And for the next 20 minutes at least, all we can really do is speculate. This Could this uh, have something to do with the elections? Could this have something to do with, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, some other big strategic announcement by the government? We can only really speculate at this point. Uh, Piyush Mishra joining us live on the story to try and shed some light on what this could be. Piyush, anything you're hearing from the system, from the government, on what the Prime Minister is likely to make a statement about? Well, Shiv, in few minutes from now, we can expect Prime Minister to make a big announcement. 
most likely it will be on a huge uh, scheme of uh, uh, the Modi government. Remember, we have seen whenever Prime Minister comes uh, to make any such an announcement, he always focuses about the welfare of people, welfare of masses. Uh, uh, in the last uh, few uh, uh, incidents, we have seen our Prime Minister uh, making a huge announcement, a huge uh, uh, thing about a particular scheme. Uh, today in the morning itself, uh, he uh, took part uh, in a few developmental projects. He, uh, in fact, uh, also inaugurated uh, uh, Dwarka Expressway. He has been uh, launching various projects across the country, be it about North India or about South India. He is also going to take part in many uh, you know, development schemes program uh, in uh, Southern India. So before that, we can expect um, a huge announcement regarding any kind of policies which the government is going to look forward, um, uh, be it about the, uh, the results are announced because we have seen as to how the government has been ensuing confidence that um, uh, it is going to come back. Modi government uh, uh, you know, is going among the people and telling that um, uh, it, it is the one, the BJP ruled uh, NDA government is, is the one which is going to come back. Uh, so it could be related uh, regarding the next five terms as to what will be the focus of government uh, uh, on the developmental projects. Uh, uh, remember that it is going to be a huge announcement, a big announcement by Prime Minister just ahead of the model code of conduct comes into place uh, uh, last in, 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 in the last five years uh, or in fact we can talk about in the, in the last 10 years, we have seen as to how Prime Minister has been focusing on uh, various issues, be it about uh, Garib Kalyan Yojana, Jandan Yojana, uh, Prime Minister's various schemes are about for the women welfare, for uh, the farmers welfare. Uh, he's, he's also, he also talks about Gyan. He says that I have uh, always focused on only uh, four things, four castes, uh, uh, Garib, uh, Mahila, uh, Kisan uh, and youth. This is what the Prime Minister always talks about. So this announcement basically could be about uh, uh, you know, a particular scheme uh, for the welfare of people, uh, for the welfare of masses. Uh, and this announcement, like we mentioned, that it could, it is the biggest ever announcement which Prime Minister is uh, likely to make uh, just ahead of model code of conduct comes into place because uh, uh, the election commission is likely to hold its press conference by the next week. And uh, before that, Prime Minister is making this announcement. Uh, you would remember that uh, uh, the cabinet, uh, the, la the last cabinet also of this government is going to take okay. place on Wednesday. And before that, Prime Minister coming out and making a huge announcement uh, could be basically focusing on any developmental uh, scheme or a huge scheme or a huge uh, program of Modi government uh, in, uh, on which it is going to work up uh, when uh, the Modi okay. government... Uh, Stay with me, Piyush. Uh, you know, it's all, I, I think it's pretty clear that this is going to be election related, but we don't know what uh, it's going to be. Uh, uh, you know, we can only speculate at this point of time, but a very short period of time before we get some clarity on what the Prime Minister is going to be speaking about. Mosmi Singh is also live with us. Gaurav and Piyush continue to stay with me. Uh, Mosmi, what are you hearing? You know, uh, no shortage of issues on the table right now that the Prime Minister could potentially speak about. Uh, anything that you're picking up? So as soon as uh, the news poured in, Shiv, that the Prime Minister was going to address the nation uh, in the opposition circles, their speculation drive, is it going to be a huge uh, poll announcement? Is it going to be a big poll promise related to farmers? Uh, everybody is trying to connect uh, the dots as far as BJP's campaign is concerned. Uh, the We are here in the Congress office and all of a sudden, the senior leaders are in a huddle. They would be the opposition would definitely be watching Prime Minister's speech uh, very closely and this comes very close on the heels of uh, Malika Arjun Kharge, the, the Congress President's uh, press conference just about uh, one hour ago. So clearly the Congress uh, has been caught unaware about uh, the Prime Minister's announcement. We will have to wait and see. Uh, the the, the uh, Congress President had launched a frontal attack on Prime Minister Narin Modi saying that there are leaders who are talking about crossing the 400 figure mark to change uh, the constitution in the BJP and the Prime Minister in fact doesn't say and do that talking himself but makes people say such kind of things that creates an atmosphere of uncertainty. So there you are, the Congress, uh, there you know talking about how uh, the BJP's poll campaign is itself uh, a big question mark over the poll campaign. We'll have to wait and see what the Prime Minister uh, says. But I try to catch a lot of Congress leaders and say that would they want to react and perhaps they all wanted to do their research before they spoke about what the PM has up his sleeves.
Mosmi, but you know, uh, 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 governmental schemes, etc., is very, very possible, especially in the wake of uh, uh, you know Rahul Gandhi and the Congress Party and their manifesto promises. Could this be something linked to that? Some kind of big disruptive announcement that is election related? Maybe not something that is policy related, but something that is, uh, you know, could be some kind of a disruptor as far as Modi 3.0 is concerned. And we do know that the Prime Minister, uh, you know, likes playing these mind games and psychological games, uh, you know, with the opposition. It could be something like that. Shiv, absolutely. You know, the way the BJP's electoral machinery has been working uh, very, very uh, thick and fast with a lot of precision. They've been tapping in uh, as far as on the raw nerve of the opposition is concerned. And the big ticket schemes have been uh, the schemes that are related to the poorest of the poor, the big beneficiary vote bank that uh, uh, the Modi government uh, 1.0 had created and 2.0 in fact worked and built on it. So Modi 3.0 is going to be a lot about the welfare of the masses, welfare schemes uh, being doled out to the micro level. That's been like a game changer for the BJP. And as you said, we could expect a big game changer, a big ticket scheme that was reaching out to the BPL category, to the poorest of poor. Now we'll have to see what the opposition has been gunning for as far as the shortcomings of the Modi government are concerned. And the BJP could have done a fact check, a reality check if they were found wanting as far as, you know, crossing that 400 figure mark is concerned in relation uh, to some certain areas. The PM could announce something big on that count. And that could be, uh, you know, with uh, the five guarantees that the Congress yes. is pro promising, it could be a counter move on that one. It could relate to the youth because Rahul Gandhi has announced five big guarantees for the youth. So it could be related to the youth uh, or to the women, farmers, uh, to the to to, uh, to the poorest of the poor, the tribals, some scheme that could actually uh, get the BJP in okay. the game as far as not winning the election, but meeting its target. Okay, stay with me, Mosmi. Very interesting perspective there. Uh, Polomi Saha is also live with me from the BJP office. Uh, she tracks the BJP. Polomi, uh, big statement. This doesn't happen very often. I am reminded of the COVID days. Every time there is a notification from the government or the PMO saying there is an important statement coming up from the Prime Minister. Uh, obviously, this has nothing to do with COVID, thankfully, but uh, this is election season. Many, many things on the table. The battle has started, uh, you know, in every way that, you know, one can fathom. Uh, what is your sense? What are you picking up? Well, uh, you know, uh, the Prime Minister's office or the BJP is not giving away anything at the moment. It seems like only a select few know what this announcement is uh, going to be all about. So, uh, clearly, just a short while ago, we got that big ticket announcement from the Ministry of Home Affairs uh, that mm. the CA rules will be notified by tonight. Huge decision uh, coming in before, of course, uh, uh, the announcement of the schedule for the general elections. And then, of course, now this, uh, uh, you know, important alert coming in that the Prime Minister is to make uh, an announcement uh, 30 minutes. Uh, um, you know, that was sent a short while ago. So uh, roughly at about 5.30 p.m. we expect that announcement uh, to come in. Uh, it is going to be a big ticket announcement which will essentially be linked to uh, the elections, of course. Uh, uh, some, uh, uh, you know, something uh, which, uh, whether it's populist in nature, whether it appears to be a sop uh, uh, to the people of the country ahead of uh, the schedule of general elections uh, being announced and the model code of conduct coming into effect. Uh, the opposition, of course, is watching very, very uh, keenly. Today, of course, uh, the Prime Minister, uh, you know, had, um, you know, uh, uh, sobs that he was, in fact, uh, handing mm. out as far as, uh, uh, you know, Lakpati Didis are concerned as well. Earlier this uh, uh, day today, he was, in fact, uh, participating in the what was the Sashak Nari Biksit Bharat program, and he was a witness to agricultural drone demonstrations, which were conducted by Namo Drone Didis at the um, Indian, uh, Indian Agricultural Research Institute in Pusa earlier this morning. You know, the yeah. Prime Minister has reiterated not just, uh, you know, in official meetings, uh, before 
four secretaries uh, or the ministers or the Union Council of Ministers. He's reiterated this before. BJP functionaries, office bearers, members of parliament as well, that he focuses, his entire focus is what he has coined an acronym called Gyan, which is mm. G for Garib, Y for Yuva, A for Anadada, which is farmers, and N for yes. Nari, which is women. So I'm, I, I'm anticipating something around that itself uh, uh, that this announcement is likely to be all about. It's going to be a big ticket announcement, like I said. His final cabinet meeting comes on the 13th of March, two days from now at 12 noon at the 7 Lok Kalyan Mark, where again, he will, of course, thank all his cabinet colleagues uh, for the time uh, that they've given and their work for the government over the past five years. And of course, uh, wish them all the luck as they go into uh, the general elections. But again, we were anticipating mm. when we broke that news of the weekend that the final union cabinet is to meet on March 13th at 5 p.m. that we were expecting some key announcements by the prime minister before, of course, the schedule for the general elections was announced. It appears now that the prime minister is already ready with those announcements, which we were expecting would be taken in the final cabinet on March 13th, Shiv. Very, very interesting. Uh, you know, something disruptive and something big is perhaps the minimum that anybody can say about what the Prime Minister uh, is going to announce. The other thing we can perhaps all agree on is that it's going to be linked either directly or indirectly to the elections. Is it going to be a national SOP? Uh, you know, is it going to be something to do with the South? Something tells me it could have something to do with the South. I don't know. Uh, you know, the Prime Minister Gaurav is about to make his sixth visit so far this year, uh, you know, to the South, to the Southern state. Uh, he's been uh, remarkably consistent uh, in his uh, focus on states where the BJP, you know, practically has no chance of opening its account. But that's the BJP's long game. And the Prime Minister's kind of predilection with the South somehow tells me that maybe what the Prime Minister is going to announce, uh, you know, could have something to do with the South or a SOP, uh, you know, pertaining to the South. Who knows? I have no idea, but I'm just conjecturing. What do you think, Gaurav? Could it be something to do with the South? So whatever the Prime Minister does, uh, just this morning he said it's Virat and Vishal, uh, uh, it's, it's grand in scale, uh, uh, you know, and it would be for the entire nation, uh, and perhaps not region-specific. Shiv, you and I were discussing a NOTAM that's been issued, uh, and that uh, does it have something to do with that NOTAM, uh, or a notice to airmen, uh, 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 that... Uh, could be extremely critical. Uh, could it be something, as uh, Polomi was mentioning, Gyan is one of Prime Minister Narendra Modi's key focus area in the run-up to elections. Uh, the farmers have been agitating. Is there something in it uh, for the farmers? Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, the youth, the poor, the women and the farmers are have been amongst uh, his core uh, focus areas. South, as you very rightly pointed out, Shiv, one of his key result areas because yeah. they've virtually maxed out uh, in, in the north uh, and... If they have to reach that 370 mark, uh, that, that's what the BJP's target for these elections are. And 400 plus when it comes to uh, the NDA, he would have to, or his uh, alliance partners would have to make major inroads uh, south hmm. of India. So that is one of the key focus areas. He's been traveling extensively in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, in Karnataka, in Andhra Pradesh, uh, and in Telangana. So uh, uh, you, while he continues to do that, even in the days and weeks ahead, you and I, perhaps, Shiv, uh, we've been talking to our sources, uh, whether it's something to do with that NOTAM uh, that's being issued. Are we going to yeah. hear something uh, on, on, a, on a missile test? Uh, that, again, is a big signal that goes out at a very, very critical time. Uh, whether it's, it's our borders or it's a message that's going out in the Indo-Pacific, a NOTAM uh, or a notice to airmen for a missile test, again, becomes extremely crucial. So we will have to wait and watch the 14 minutes to go for the Prime Minister's big announcement, Shiv. 14 minutes to go and uh, it's only for the next 14 minutes that we can actually conjecture and speculate. So, uh, you know, I'm going to indulge this just a little bit more because what Gaurav is talking about, viewer, uh, is a window that has just opened today, uh, between today and uh, five days from now, for India to potentially conduct its longest range submarine launched nuclear ballistic missile test. Now, we don't know if that test has already happened. There are reports suggesting that a missile test has taken at some point today, uh, you know, from the Odisha coast. But we don't know if that is the test that is going to be, uh, you know, revealed uh, by the Prime Minister. We don't even know if that is the topic that the Prime Minister is going to speak about. But what we do know for sure, like what Gaurav just mentioned, is that India is about to mark a huge milestone in its strategic uh, nuclear deterrence program by testing what is potentially believed to be its longest range uh, nuclear 
uh, delivery system that is launched from a submarine, uh, which is the third leg of its nuclear triad. So, therefore, if that has something to do with what the Prime Minister is going to be announced, uh, you know, it's going to be very, very interesting. I don't know if that's what the Prime Minister is going to talk about, uh, Gaurav, but we'll have to wait and see. Like you said, uh, only 13 minutes to go before, uh, you know, all channels of conjecture will need to end. Uh, Polomi, uh, bringing you back in here, uh, uh, it, it has been a typically, uh, typically aggressive and hostile and ill-tempered election season. Uh, well, you know, we've, we've, we've seen the pressure of, uh, uh, you know, the Parivarvad politics that has played out, the manifesto that's been announced by, uh, you know, the Congress party, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the many socialist sort of schemes that they have announced in terms of what they want to do for youth and other people and women. Uh, so I'm wondering if it's going to be something as direct as that, some kind of disruptive, uh, you know, BJP scheme that the Prime Minister wants to put out. But I'm also wondering if the Prime Minister would be communicating something like that, Polomi. Well, uh, you know, like I said, it's uh, all in the realm of suspense at the moment. You know, yeah. earlier today, Shiv, again, this is all in the realm of speculation. There was a lot of buzz after what Anand Kumar Hegde said about changing the constitution if you want to go char so par. Rahul Gandhi has just tweeted about it as well, saying the prime minister's silence on that specific remark is Khatarnak, he says. It's disturbing. Now, uh, you know, uh, that is Rahul Gandhi's remark, which has just come in right now by wire, a tweet, a post at the moment. Earlier, there was a lot of buzz. Is Anand Kumar Hegde indicating towards something? Remember that the Covent panel report on One yeah. Nation, One Election is ready. It is ready to endorse One Nation, One Election uh, as well. So there's been a lot of buzz around, uh, you know, ONOP as well. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you know, there is going to be a big ticket announcement on the same uh, as well. But uh, the fact of the matter is from CAA to One Nation, One Election, we have, of course, uh, you, know, uh, you know, asked our sources about most of these uh, possibilities. Uh, but the fact is nobody is giving anything away at the moment. They're remaining extremely tight-lipped uh, about it. But yes, uh, uh, it's only a matter of a few minutes before, of course, uh, the Prime Minister goes live with that announcement, Shiv. Polami, what about UCC? Could it have something to do with UCC? I mean, the ball has already been set rolling on that in that regard. Could, could it be something to do with UCC? Well, uh, not at the moment. As far as UCC is concerned, uh, Shiv, uh, uh, from the BJP, the sense that I got from speaking to top leaders and uh, hmm. those uh, state uh, leaders that are, in fact, chief ministers in the works of uh, bringing UCC into their own states after, of course, Uttarakhand uh, implemented uh, the law, said that it will go statewide itself. So it's not something that the BJP has hmm. uh, decided on as far as this tenure, this outgoing tenure of the NDA is concerned. This is possibly... Uh, you know, an agenda, a key agenda for the party in uh, the subsequent five years if it wins uh, and comes back to power. So that is as far as the, uh, the BJP's agenda is uh, concerned. But uh, yes, it could be anything. You know, some, uh, you know someone just, uh, just dropped me a message saying there's possibly a big ticket uh, space achievement as well that the Prime Minister could be talking about as well. So like I said, it's all out there right now, um, you know, within the realm of speculation because the guys <laughs> who officially know it or possibly even have an inkling to it are keeping extremely tight-lipped everyone's at the moment just indicating to us it could be this it could be that so let me just list out all the you know all the fabulous possibilities of what this announcement could be about uh, you know it could be a politically disruptive uh, you know statement about some kind of national policy it could be some kind of political sop uh, you know to battle what the opposition has announced it could be, uh, you know, nuclear, like Gaurav has conjectured, possible. It has happened in the past as well. Remember when the Prime Minister had talked about the anti-satellite uh, missile test? Uh, it, there's a possibility of, uh, uh, you know, like Polomi said, uh, the, uh, you, uh, you know, some, some kind of achievement in space, something to do with ISRO. We do know that the Prime Minister has a special affection for all things ISRO since last year and before that as well. Uh, it, could be, uh, uh, it could be something else entirely. Uh, I think uh, uh, the, uh, the fact that there is so much suspense over what the Prime Minister is about to say with no indications whatsoever uh, about what he's going to talk about uh, is, is uh, you know, makes it all but confirms, Gaurav, uh, that this is going to be something big. You know, w when you build it up in this manner, 
you know, uh, allow the kind of suspense and, and uh, speculation to build up for about, a, about half an hour before you actually make a statement, uh, it's going to be something big. Shiv, because the government uh, and top government sources have already confirmed that uh, when it comes to the Citizenship Amendment Act, that notification will yeah. take place in due course as per standard uh, procedure. So that is SOP that will be followed. For an SOP to be followed, you do not need the Prime Minister to make a big announcement. And uh, the government was very clear from day one, at an appropriate time, Citizenship Amendment Act would be notified. So we perhaps uh, we can keep that uh, aside. That mm. will happen. The government also has its systems in place to ensure that the kind of agitation uh, uh, that was orchestrated last time, the kind of riots that took place, uh, the kind of agitation that took place, all of that will not be permitted to be repeated. That is something that the government, uh, at least that is what sources had told us some time back, that all of that has been sorted. The fact that there's a not am out, uh, so you and I would be pro uh, possibly thinking that a big ticket announcement, if it has to do with a notice that goes out and a window that's been created, will it be that big missile test? Because that missile test, uh, uh, while it will have uh, its political dividends, it, it has a much bigger, much, much bigger ramification yeah. uh, for the country and for the region. Uh, and that's a very significant message that goes out, a mes message that the government has been trying to give out from day one that there, yeah. will, there will be no compromise on national security and on protecting our borders. So uh, if, if this is to do with that, then that's a very, very significant message uh, going out at a time when troops uh, are also adequately deployed and in numbers uh, at both borders uh, and uh, to, to ensure that nothing uh, goes wrong from now uh, till election results uh, are, are declared. So all of that has already been factored in. But will it be a gyan related uh, uh, announcement where the Prime Minister's key result areas? Because when the opposition talks about, uh, uh, you know, give us a caste survey, caste survey, caste survey, the government's response has already been that the only caste that the Prime Minister talks about uh, uh, or wants to uplift uh, are, are the women, the youth, um, uh, the Annadatas, uh, you know, uh, all of them have to be brought forward. So will it remain about them? That remains to be seen and shift perhaps just six more minutes to go for it. Six more minutes of fantasy and speculation before we finally get it. You know, I also want to temper expectations of our viewers because uh, this is, of course, a very, very serious matter. We may be uh, indulging here as journalists in conjecture over what the possibilities are. Uh, but, but let's remind ourselves that this is the prime minister of the country who is going to be making what is being described by the PMO uh, as an important statement. So, uh, you know, th this is serious business. Uh, it affects the country. The fact that he's making a public statement to the nation means it's something that affects us all. So we'll be listening very, very closely. Piyush, if I could bring you in now, uh, I'm sure the opposition, uh, you know, has been sort of electrified into attention as to what uh, the prime minister has up his sleeve now. They're always watching, you know, what the prime minister plans to do. He's been playing a lot of mind games with them. This could be something else now. Well, certainly, and Rahul Gandhi has already tweeted uh, Khatarnak. So this uh, shows as to how uh, the opposition is uh, going to react on whatever announcement Prime Minister is going to make. Uh, but Shiv, uh, let us remind to all our viewers, uh, uh, when this uh, announcement had come for the very first time during in Modi regime, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it was the time when Prime Minister had announced demonetization, yeah. following which we had seen as to how the BJP had swept uh, the elections of uh, uh, Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and many assembly elections were swept, swept, swept by BJP. At the time, also the opposition parties had uh, criticized the move of uh, announcing demonetization. But following which we have seen multiple times Prime Minister coming out and uh, uh, such messages uh, keep coming in from uh, uh, the credible uh, in, uh, sources where they say that Prime Minister is going to uh, make a huge announcement. And once again, this uh, alert has come, which is certainly signifying uh, that Prime Minister is uh, indeed going to make a big announcement. And this announcement is going to be uh, just before the model code of con conduct is in place. Uh, remember okay. that the next cabinet meeting of uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi of uh, this uh, term is going to take place on Wednesday and before this uh, it is going to be a okay, huge announcement okay. which Prime Minister in just two minutes from now is going to make. Sure. Very, very interestingly, just a few minutes ago, viewer, and Polomi has just pointed this out to me, that ISRO has released uh, information about the first glimpse of the beauty and complexity of Earth through modern imager and sounder payloads on board India's INSAT 3DS. Uh, you know, this is uh, another big achievement by ISRO that's been put out and that adds another layer of possibility, Polomi.
you think well uh, like i said uh, the realm of possibilities is only growing uh, with uh, you know the passage of time uh, shiv at this point of time until the prime minister speaks uh, uh, having covered this party for the last 10 years that it has been in power one thing i've learned is do not do not try to second guess what the prime minister is going to make in one of those surprise announcements where we get an alert saying in 30 minutes from now the prime minister will be going uh, live it could be uh, anything at that po a point of time like i pointed out while we were ch chatting earlier that the indication was it could be about some space achievement then of course you know uh, this uh, uh, this uh, message uh, from this post from isro uh, was highlighted as uh, well so uh, again i do not have official confirmation at this point of time officially nobody is uh, you know responding to our text messages at this uh, point of time those who could be in the know for this uh, announcement is all about so uh, yes it's only a few minutes from now uh, i guess prime minister modi will put all of that speculation to rest himself Yeah so it's it's useless speculating any further given there are only about 90 seconds to go uh, if the prime minister is on time uh, uh, that that statement is set to be at 5:30 pm it's 5:28 uh, the prime minister we don't know how long that statement is or if it's a long speech uh, we have no idea no information viewer all of the questions that you're asking right now are questions that we are attempting to get answers for uh, but those answers will be answered by the prime minister themselves of course uh, when he begins speaking Uh, in just about a minute from now so i'm going to uh, uh, i'm going to leave it there with our reporters as we stand by for the prime minister to begin his statement uh, the prime minister's office remember has described it as an important issue but provided no further information as to what it could possibly be what i and our reporters here and our political team have conjectured is uh, that it could be a variety of issues but we don't know which one could it be uh india's nuclear missile test which is said to have just happened or is about to happen could it be an isro achievement could it be a disruptive uh national policy statement could it be something to do with the elections could it be one nation one poll all of these are possibilities that continue to exist as we wait for the prime minister statement to begin uh let me also remind you that in the past uh, when the prime minister has made important statements uh they have pertained to things like uh, uh like demonetization india's anti satellite uh, missile test uh, uh then a series of uh, uh, statements and speeches that the prime minister made uh, regarding the covid lockdown notifications uh so they've always been issues of uh, you know of of a great degree of seriousness uh and also disruptive in their own way so we'll have to see what this actually pertains to uh you know as we began this broadcast at 5 pm the number of different theories that have done the rounds about what the prime minister could be wanting to speak about uh you know have been have been flowing in does it have something to do with china does it have something to do with the, with with a, some kind of a medical breakthrough uh you know within the country could it have something to do with the south of the country as far as politics is concerned uh, could it have something to do with seats could it have something to do uh, 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 with political realignments in the country all of these uh, uh, viewer theoretically are possibilities as we continue to make uh, 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 await that statement when it begins it's going to begin any moment now it's already 5:31 it's supposed to start at 5:30 Uh, so we're just going to wait on that. Uh, Polomi, let me quickly come back to you. We'll probably have to cut out if the prime minister speaks. Uh, you know, but uh, uh, the, the prime minister in the past uh, has set the bar so high with his, uh, you know, with his statements. Whenever there has been, you know, a prior notification about a prime minister's statement, it's always been something big. Uh, you know, and that perhaps. adds to the kind of suspense over what the prime minister is going to speak about especially on the threshold of elections That's right. Uh, you know, it does uh, add uh, to a lot of uh, speculation around what it's going to be about. Uh, you know, because the prime minister, remember, uh, has been, of course, uh, going across various states at the moment uh, since, of course, uh, he's had an hectic uh, schedule of uh, tours. Uh, you know, especially to the southern part of the country, the eastern part uh, of the country. Now, of course, he's touring uh, parts like Rajasthan, like Haryana as well. He was in Gurugram uh, today as well. Jammu and Kashmir, he's been to uh, as well. There's a um, whole uh, packed schedule again. Uh, to 
the southern part of the country, southern states, between the 15th of March to the 19th of March as well. So uh, many, of course, are linking this with elections. The opposition, of course, uh, uh, watching this uh, with bated breath because they believe that there could be a big ticket announcement in terms of uh, a populist measure uh, that could be intended with a view to entice voters ahead of uh, model code of conduct coming into effect when, of course, these announcements, uh, uh, populist uh, announcements won't be allowed. So, uh, yes, uh, of course, everyone's uh, looking at this uh, very, very keenly. Uh, but as far as... Uh, uh, you know, uh, speculation is a concern. Like you've been pointing out, it's gone from the wide range of uh, whether this is all about CA, which has, of course, uh, uh, been put aside a, a while ago because those rules will be notified later yeah. uh, tonight. A Gazette notification will do the job as far as that is concerned. But as far as, uh, you know, other possibilities, like whether this is an announcement concerning the space sector itself, that is picking up a lot of uh, steam as we speak, as far as, uh, you know, uh, the realm of speculation is a concern. Like I said, in a short while from now, the Prime Minister, of course, will be making uh, that announcement. But uh, usually in the past, like you said, you, of course, uh, recall the time that he made those announcements. He had made those addresses to the nation during uh, the times of COVID when, of course, he had to reassure the citizens that the government was on top of the job and they were doing everything uh, to ensure that, you know, uh, citizens' health was being taken care of uh, and measures were being taken in order to ensure uh, that there were, uh, you know, fewer deaths and fatalities and, you know, hospitals were equipped, etc. And then, of course, there was that time of the surprise announcement yeah. in 2016 of for demonetization, which, again, of course, that one came completely out of the <laughs> blue for everyone. Yeah. And you had everyone running to their ATMs and banks uh, uh, within the hour. So, uh, you know, the... Range is very wide, but, uh, you know, as far as this announcement is concerned, like I said, uh, many placing their bets. Uh, this could be possibly about the space sector, um, uh, could be about a space sector achievement. But again, we'll have to wait for the prime minister to make any such announcement. Space, politics, defense, nuclear, uh, you know, uh, something to do with youth and women. We don't know just yet. Policy, who knows? And, uh, you know, Polami, just as a matter of curiosity, these statements that the Prime Minister puts out, are they, uh, you know, are they, I'm sure there must be curiosity from our viewers as well. Are, is this, are they usually, I, I don't think there's a way of really checking, but are they live statements or are they recorded segments which are played out? These are mostly uh, recorded uh, statements uh, that are played out, uh, Shiv, mm. uh, from, uh, you know, to the best of our knowledge. Very rarely uh, is it live. Uh, these are yeah, recorded yeah. statements that are played out at a certain point of time. And, of course, when it's a major announcement, you do receive an alert saying, you know, well, watch out within the next 40, uh, within the next 30 minutes or so. <laughs> uh, there could be an announcement uh, that would be made. There will be an announcement that will be made. So you're all prepared and geared up uh, like we are. Of course, you yeah. know, everything as far as, for instance, over here at the BGP headquarters, where I am right now. This is, this is supposed to be all about the second candidate list and who's in and who's out. <laughs> we're not talking about that. We're all talking and we're all, you know, asking each other, do you know, do you know, do you know? Have you spoken to anyone uh, in the Prime Minister's office? Have you spoken to someone here? Le Le yes, Gaurav, come in. Gaurav, Gaurav. Prime Minister, the Prime Minister has just announced proud of our DRDO scientists for Mission Divyastra. The flight test of indigenously developed Agni-5 missile with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle MIRV technology. Shiv Prime Minister Narendra Modi, the NOTAM that had been issued, uh, the Prime Minister has said we are proud of our DRDO scientists for mission Divyastra. So it is the Divyastra mission that has been tested. The first flight test of the indigenously developed Agni-5 missile with multiple independently targetable re-entry vehicle technology. This announcement has been made just about 30 seconds ago. And Shiv, you and I were talking about the NOTAM or that notice to airmen that had been issued, that window that had just been created. And this is a very, very big signal that India is sending out a signal about India's security, strategic security in the Indian Ocean region when you test out the Divyastra. And that's the announcement that's been made by Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Agni 5 is extremely, extremely crucial for national security.
security shift as you and I well know this has been in the works for quite some time and this is a very very big step in India's national security the Agni 5 missile a submarine launched nuclear capable missile that completes India's triad so you have nuclear tip missiles that can be fired from land air sea and now subsea from a submarine hidden anytime and this will make India's enemies and adversaries think a hundred times before they try any misadventure Shiv. This is huge Gaurav you know the Agni 5 viewer uh, is India's longest range nuclear delivery system it has a range of 6,000 kilometers it's already in operational service with India's nuclear command called the strategic forces command what the Prime Minister has announced today with mission Divyastra is that India's Agni 5 missile is not just a simple ballistic missile capable of hitting targets 6,000 kilometers away, but it also carries multiple independently targeted, uh, 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 targeted re-entry vehicles or MIRVs, which basically means that the missile near its end point splits into multiple warheads, confusing the enemy and maximizing impact. Gaurav, this is absolutely huge uh, and, the, uh, and the Prime Minister has chosen to single out the DRDO, the, the, you know, the amazing men and women of the uh, Advanced Systems Laboratory and the other missile laboratories under the DRDO that have worked tirelessly to make India not only totally uh, independent and self-reliant as far as missiles are concerned, but giving us some of the most reliable uh, you know, strategic land-based and submarine-based deterrents. This particular missile, we understand, uh, you know, was possibly a land test. That's what the Agni-5 is. But a version of this, Gaurav, could possibly be tested from the sea in the next few days as well. So a big this announcement by the Prime Minister. It, it, it is huge. It is huge. Uh, a step like this for India's national security and for strategic deterrence. This sends out a very clear message to India's adversaries. Uh, the fact that India has this capability, Divyastra or the divine weapon uh, is, is what the Agni 5 is. Now, when you have multiple uh, re-entry uh, vehicles, uh, MIRVs, what does this mean? That even if the enemy is able to take out one or two, there are multiple others that can still target the VA and VP vital asset and vital points of the adversary, giving India that capability and enemy that disadvantage. The fact that this weapon has now been tested, it was in the works. The Defence Research and Development Organisation has been working on this ship. You'd recall the Integrated Missile Development Programme uh, has been in the works for quite some time and very successful in most cases. Agni, Prithvi, Akash, Nag, Trishul, five of these India has been working on from the 1980s. The fact that Divyastra has now been tested and successfully tested and the Prime Minister has congratulated scientists of the Defence Research and Development Organisation for the successful flight test or the successful test of the Divyastra sends out a very, very significant message to India's adversaries and uh, the message that goes out that India is the net security provider in the entire Indian Ocean region. Shiv, the way India is so strategically located in the Indian Ocean region, unless you have strength of such weapons, you cannot protect the Indian Ocean region and better the adversary from carrying out its activities. This is where India stamps its authority in the Indian Ocean region, Shiv. This is, uh, you know, viewer, I just want to tell you something about the Agni-5 missile and what the Prime Minister uh, has actually announced is, uh, is, is an enormous, enormous milestone and a step forward as far as India's nuclear delivery system technology is concerned. I'm going to ask our producers to pull out, uh, you know, archival footage of the Agni-5 missile because there have been uh, more than a handful of tests of the Agni-5 already. But the reason why this particular test has been singled out uh, uh, you know, to be highlighted and spotlighted by the Prime Minister is because this is not just an ordinary ballistic missile test. Uh, this is a nuclear missile test, obviously not with a nuclear warhead for the test, but for this demonstration of capability and range where the missile itself is uh, uh, constructed uh, with a higher technology, better technology, more accurate and capable of confusing anti-missile systems using something called MIRV, which is multiple independently targetable re-entry 
vehicles, which basically means the warhead, not very far from the target, actually splits into multiple re-entry vehicles. And therefore, it's like one missile splitting into several different re-entry systems to hit the target and therefore makes the job of defenses of your enemy, their anti-missile systems, their ballistic missile defense systems, uh, uh, it completely jams them up or at least attempts to jam them up and confuse them, therefore increasing exponentially the efficacy and impact of your nuclear strike. Remember, the Agni-5 is a nuclear-capable missile. It's not meant for conventional wars. It's not even a conventional weapon. It is precisely used, uh, Gaurav, and to bring you back in as a weapon that is uh, a present in the Indian arsenal in order to prevent any kind of provocative attack from the other side. Because remember, India's nuclear policy is very clear. India has a no first use nuclear policy, which means India would never fire the Agni-5 first at any country. But should any country uh, dare to, uh, to conduct a nuclear attack on India, big or small, then missiles like the Agni-5 would be used to make sure that that country ceases to exist. Total and complete destruction of the aggressor is guaranteed under India's nuclear policy and that's where the Agni-5 is an element. The technology that the Prime Minister has endorsed and applauded today through his tweet and through his statement perhaps shortly, uh, uh, probably a video statement also that the Prime Minister is going to be making very, very shortly, basically is to commend India's uh, you, you know, rocket men and women, rocket boys and girls of the DRDO, uh, uh, you know, all the way back to Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, scientists before him, all the way down to the... <coughs> <coughs> beg your pardon, the current missile scientists and aeronautical clusters that continue to research and deliver such amazing weapons means that India, its strategic forces, its deterrent, its nuclear deterrent is, uh, is in incredibly good hands with India's scientists. Gaurav, big day for DRDO. Uh, you know, you couldn't get a bigger pat on the back than from the Prime Minister. The Agni-5 is operational, but this is also a sign that even your existing weapons are being fine-tuned, uh, you know, they're being upgraded, they're being given even better technology, because as we know, countries like China, like with India, are building anti-missile and ballistic missile defense systems, and we need to make sure that if we are aggressed upon by countries like China or others with tactical nukes or other nuclear systems, the response should be so terrible, so absolute, so utterly destructive that no country will dare to make that first move. That's what this is about, Gaurav. Shiv, this was technology that was continuously denied to India. No country wants to share this kind of technology and that's why Agni-5 is extremely, extremely crucial. Um, the fact that it has a range uh, of, of over 5,000 kilometers, some argue up to 7,000 kilometers, not yet the intercontinental ballistic missile uh, with a range of 10,000 kilometers, but Agni-5 is capable of sending out that message to India's adversaries that, that salami slicing, nibbling of Indian territory or those designs are completely unacceptable and should there be uh, a strike at India, India is well capable of responding. India has been working continuously on the triad. That triad also becomes extremely crucial as you very rightly pointed out. Agni-5 is a land-based missile but India is also testing uh, sea and sub-sea uh, submarine launched uh, uh, nuclear missiles. India is testing uh, all those systems so that the triad is completed. Now the the Vyastra test becomes extremely crucial. The timing of this test is extremely crucial because there was some apprehension that India's adversaries could try something when the entire focus of a nation uh, is on elections. And that is where uh, India's adversaries could try something. But this message clearly goes out with troops deployed at the line of actual control, with depth areas well covered, with uh, Air Force uh, uh, adopting uh, uh, a very, very aggressive posture to defend India's territory. And this, then this missile takes, this takes place where the Defence Research and Development Organisation is being congratulated by the Prime Minister, sends out a strategic message not just to the adversaries, but also to those who depend on India for protection and those who are still wanting to fight that adversary. So very important message that the Prime Minister has just sent out to the Defence Research and Development Organisation for the first successful flight test of the Divyastra.
I want to just, uh, Gaurav, stay with me. I want to share some uh, wonderful, uh, you know, little nuggets and factoids about today's test and why it's so important and why the Prime Minister, uh, you know, has singled it out for this kind of praise. Uh, now, Mission Divyastra is the first flight test of the Agni 5 with the technology that I just described to you. This will ensure that a single missile can deploy multiple warheads at different locations. So it doesn't need to be just one target. It can be different multiple targets with just one missile. The project director is a woman and has significant women's contribution. This is something I want to uh, explain to our viewers. There is absolutely nothing uncommon or abnormal uh, you know, or special about a woman leading this program. Viewer, multiple... Indian weapons projects, including past Agni projects, have been led very, very capably by women. There are hundreds of women scientists on par with men in, in many ways, way ahead across different weapons uh, uh, programs in the DRDO. So it should come as no surprise to anyone that a woman has led this particular uh, project called Mission Divyastra. With the test of Mission Divyastra, India has joined a select group of nations who have this multiple independently targetable uh, re-entry vehicle technology or MERV technology. The system is equipped with indigenous avionic systems and high accuracy, high accuracy sensor packages, which ensure that the re-entry vehicles, which is basically means the, the split up warheads targeting different targets, reach the target points within the desired accuracy. The capability is an enunciator of India's growing technological prowess. So this is huge. This is an absolute milestone. There's no question that this is a massive uh, uh, you know, technology leap as far as India's nuclear deterrent is concerned. So along with the Prime Minister, we applaud the men and women of the DRDO, the scientists, the program team, the project director, the telemetry system uh, uh, teams uh, that are in the Bay of Bengal and the Indian Ocean who would have been tracking this missile. A huge amount of effort goes into developing a missile, building a missile and then testing it successfully in this manner. So our big salute to the entire Divyastra team for executing this so wonderfully and for the Prime Minister for putting the spotlight on something that deserves attention and usually spends all of its life under a shroud of secrecy.